Welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. Our doe Rory is officially in labor. She's looking quite wide. This I think is her sixth or seventh freshen. And if you're not sure what that is, that's actually the term for when a doe gives birth again because what it does is it refreshes her milk supply. But she's a pro mama and I'm just gonna sit back here, watch her, and I'll help if I need to, but I kind of doubt that I'm gonna have to. One of the ways that I can tell that things are going well without really knowing much at all about where she is in her progression is the fact that she's chewing her cud. A goat chewing their cud is a very content, happy, and healthy goat. I take a lot of comfort in seeing that. I wanna see her chew her cud at least every 20 to 30 minutes, and she's doing it much more frequently than that right now. And I have seen little tiny pushes, though I didn't get them on camera, but we're close. in the sack, look. Look at that. All right. Come on, kid. There we go. <laughs> wow, Rory. Another doe. Perfect. Good job, Roar. Little boy's crawling away. We've got moon spots on this little girl. Right there. Woo! Right there. Yeah. Your daddy gave you moon spots. Look. How nice. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> oh. 
Hey, Mars, what's that? <laughs> so our livestock guardian dog, Mars, up here. This is his first time being around newborn kids. So he's gonna have to acclimate and understand that he can't play rough with them. But that's a task for another day. <laughs> baby. It's a baby. You smell that? What a good boy. You're a good boy. Yeah. Oh, cute. <laughs> okay, okay. I know. Well, this little one it's just kind of more quiet than the other two. She was the one born last, born in the sack or in call. And she's shivering a little bit. Rory's paying attention to her for sure. I just want to make sure that she gets nice and dry. If the kids chill too much, they'll lose their suckling reflex and then it's all downhill from there. From what I've read, getting their ears clean and dry helps a ton with heat retention. I think they all have blue eyes. Yeah, you're gorgeous. You're gorgeous. Mm. I bought this calf mana supplement to help give my goats a little bit more protein and varied nutrition on the milk stand and after birth. I'm going to give Rory her normal grain ration with a little bit of this mixed in. And I am also going to go warm up some water so I can give her warm molasses water. While she's standing here eating, it's a good opportunity for the kids to get a good chance at their first drink of milk. Oftentimes, mama's way too focused on cleaning them off to stand still for them, and so the feed really, really helps with that. This water is boiling hot. I'm not going to be giving it to her like this. Her water bucket in there has been sitting out all night with her. So it's probably around 50 degrees. So adding this to it will warm that right up. in there, mommy, or baby. So in general, it's not enough just to see them nursing. I need to make sure that her teats are clear. Sometimes there's like a waxy substance that plugs the teat and it needs to be worked out by hand. Oftentimes strong kids work that plug out themselves. And if you see them constantly or consistently nursing, they're probably getting something, but it never hurts to check and make sure that the milk or colostrum really is flowing. Oh, yeah, good and thick. <laughs> yeah. What I need to do now is get everybody and spray some iodine on their umbilical cords. This will just help them with a condition, I believe it's called joint ill, and it basically is just a result of bacteria making its way into their body through that umbilical cord. Within a few hours, especially with this on it, the iodine, it will dry up and basically seal that off, and there's relatively no risk after that. This helps expedite that drying process. Come here, little girl. This is number three. She's clearly perked up well. Okay. You can put the iodine in a small cup and dip their teat. I like to spray it. Their teat. Their umbilical cord. I like to spray it. Yeah. All done. All done. All done. Here's little boy. Hi. He cute? Yeah, you got 
get hay on yours. Their umbilical cords are all in really good length. If they were really long, like dragging on the ground, I would probably elect to clip them. I don't want to clip them too short. I would probably leave them about, probably no less than half an inch long. All right, I'm getting iodine all over myself. Tis the season. Come here, girl. Number two, her lungs work. Okay. Wham. Okay, okay, okay. So I think, I think the boy is pulled, our bug havoc. He is pulled, which means naturally hornless. And I think at least the buck and number two are pulled. I think number three has horns. So here's a boy. You can see he's got a nice round head and his hair, it doesn't really swirl. Um, there's a little bit of a swirl there, but this looks like a nice, a nice line, nice pulled head. Oftentimes with boys, you can feel the little nubbins quite readily of their new horns and he appears pulled to me. And this little girl, you can see the difference with the swirling. She's got a pretty pronounced swirl where her horns are gonna come in. See that? She is horned. He is pulled. You can really tell the difference with them next to each other. Horned, pulled. These kids look bright, lively. I've seen them eat. I've sprayed their umbilical cords. I've got a baby monitor up here. I'm gonna be checking her throughout the day through that and I'll come down and watch them. But I really think everything is going to be just fine. As I mentioned before, this is the first of many kids that are going to be born this season. Our kidding season is quite lengthy. We like to spread out our breeding so that our kidding season is also spread out. I've made a new playlist for this kidding season. I'm gonna place it up here right now at this point in time. Rory's birth is the only one up there, but there will be more to come.